Hey guys, welcome back to the Small Business Doula. I'm Jessica, your host. And today we're going to be wrapping up our series on government contracts for beginners. If you are new to the channel, welcome. This channel was created to empower entrepreneurs with the knowledge and experience and wisdom that you may need to navigate as a contractor through the government contracting industry. So if you like what you see, do me a huge favor and like and subscribe to the channel. Um, and also, if you know anyone that may benefit from this information, please share this with them. Um, I believe that knowledge is power, guys. So we have to really spread knowledge with one another so that we can help build one another up. So if you are already a part of the community, welcome back. And let's go ahead and jump into the topic that we're going to be discussing today. So in the previous videos, we talked about um, what the benefits of being a contractor are and how we play a crucial role in helping or assisting the government in providing services that they need to provide to their users. Today, we're going to actually talk about how you, you go about finding and bidding on those contracts, um, because I have been getting a lot of feedback and questions about how to read solicitations and how to put in proposals as well. So I want to kind of give you guys a high level overview of what that looks like. Um, for the sake of the video, I'm not going to go into any deep details. If you want me to do a video on how we go into looking into contracts and determining how what you're going to bid on or what you won't bid on, give me thumbs up in the comment sections below so I can know if that's something that you guys want me to go into detail on. But for the sake of today's video, we're just going to go into uh, a high level version of how to find solicitations and um, what the bidding process looks like on a high, a very, very high level, guys. Okay. Um, also, if you have not registered in SAM and you need to, you need instructions on how to do that, I do have a video um, titled Step by Step Guide in Getting Started in Government Contracts that I'll link in this video as well for you to go and check out. I will be doing an updated version of that video because. Sam has also updated uh, their platform, so it will look a little different than what you see on the video that I currently have, but the foundation and the bones are pretty much the same. They just made it a little bit more user-friendly um, and added a few more features that you will be able to access inside of their system. So let's go ahead and get started with um, what we're going to be discussing today. Okay, guys, so... Um, what you see now is we are on the SAM.gov site. And um, what we're going to do now is go into how to find contract opportunities. Um, you can actually look for contract opportunities on SAM.gov without having an account. However, if you are wanting to submit awards, I'm sorry, if you are wanting to um, submit proposals to be awarded, you must be registered in SAM.gov. There are, they have some changes now. They're able to show you what the contract opportunities look like before you actually get an account. Um, but um, again, if that's something, if you're looking to actually be awarded a contract, you need to be registered in SAM.gov. So we're going to go ahead and look into the contract opportunities that are currently available. To do that, you're going to go to SAM.gov, which I am on right now. This is usually what you're going to see at their landing page. At the top, you'll see their dat their menu, which is the home, the search button, the data bank, the data services, and the help button. The search button is a way for you to be able to access the advanced searches. And then also um, another quick link would be to click on the contract opportunities. So we're going to click on contract opportunities. And then from here... Um, you can actually type in keywords. I usually don't use this option. I actually go to advanced search. So that's what I'm going to show you today. So we're going to click on advanced search. From there, you're going to get a menu on the left-hand side of the screen. And this is where you're going to put in your filters to be able to search out exactly what you're looking for. There are different NACE codes that you that'll be assigned to your company. So Typically, you're going to search your contracts by your NACE code or either by your PSC code or also known as your product service code. So first thing you're going to do here at the top is make sure that your domain is reflecting contract opportunities. 
The next filter that you're going to look into is actually the notice type. And underneath this notice type, you can actually select things such as sources sought. Your sources sought is going to be basically your market research that the government is putting out to get more information on, on how to price a product or a service, okay? Okay, another option that you can select is called a pre-solicitation. A pre-solicitation just says to um, the market that, hey, this work, this is a projected pro uh, scope of work and it's going to be coming out in the future. All right, the next one that you're going to select is solicitation. A solicitation is them soliciting for a request for a proposal or request for a quote. And then another one that I search under as well is a combined synopsis. Uh, slash solicitation, a combined synopsis means that there is guaranteed work that is going to absolutely happen, and there is also a budget for it. So underneath these notice types is where we're going to search for um, contract work, all right? The next filter that you're going to look into is the product or service information, and this is where you're going to list your NACE code. You should already have a primary NACE code assigned to your business, so this is where you'll list that NACE code there. If you have assigned additional uh, NACE codes underneath your SAM registration, you can put as many as you want in there to kind of make your results or make your search results a little bit more uh, refined. Typically, I just put my primary NACE code and then just kind of see what results I yield from that. And then um, sometimes you can also uh, skip the NACE code and then just put in your PSC code. Okay, because I get a lot of people that are interested in janitorial cleaning services, I'm going to use the NACE code uh, janitorial services, which is 561720. And let's just see what results are yielded from there. So we'll put that NACE code in. The next filter that I usually use will be the set aside. And underneath the set aside, these are where your certifications are, where you can actually um, get contracts that are set aside for underneath these certifications. So you have total small business, you have woman owned, you have hub zone, you have 8A, you have um, service disabled, veteran owned, veteran owned, economic disadvantage, local area set aside, Indian health, uh, I mean, Indian set aside uh, and so forth. So it's important to make sure that your company is qualified to uh, bid underneath these certifications because if you don't, if you're not certified and you go and submit a contract, uh, I mean, go and submit a proposal, you will not be awarded. So um, get get certified with the SBA so that you can bid underneath total small business. Uh, if you are a veteran, you can uh, qualify your business or certify your business rather with the VA as a veteran-owned small business. And you can also, if you are service disabled, meaning um, you're service connected, you can um, get your business certified as a service disabled veteran owned small business, which in my opinion is the highest certification that you can hold um, because there are a lot of opportunities out there for us uh, to you know, work with. Also, if you're woman owned, you can get your woman owned certification as well by going through the SBA and you can use that link as certified.sba.gov and you just submit your information over and they'll get you certified. Keep in mind, guys, you don't have to pay for any of these certifications. So if you're being approached by someone that's saying they can help you get your certification, but you have to pay a fee, you do not have to use that service. It's completely free for you to get your business certified. Um, underneath the SBA or the VA or whatever, you know, most of these will be under the SBA. The the only one that's not under the SBA is the VA and I think the Indian uh, economic set aside. So um, for this sake, I am going to use service better known. And I typically select both options. And then that's all that I do there. Um, now, I recommend that you you know leave your options open when it comes to the place of performance if you're comfortable with that um, my my company we actually provide services uh, nationwide so we're not restricted to um, you know where we're centrally located however you have to do what's best for you if you feel that you can manage something that's a little bit more local for you then by all means do that there's nothing wrong with that but if you feel like you can do you can manage 
contracts that are not within your area um, as far as place of perform performance, then you want to leave all of the other filters blank. All right. Now, let's see what results were yielded um, just by putting those filters in. On the right hand side, I can see off of the top that there are custodial services needed in Red Bank, New Jersey. The current date offer uh, is due is July 17th, which is in like four days. Um, and it's a combined synopsis, which means that this guaranteed work. They're going to absolutely guarantee that they're going to, you know, award. And this this is a, uh, a scope of work that needs to be done. I can also see that on July 10th, there was an updated combined synopsis due where um, at Hampton National Cemetery, they needed janitorial services it was in a uh, requirement. And um, that offer was due on July 10th. On July 14th, which is tomorrow, there's some custodial services that are needed in Mainville, Ohio. And that is a combined synopsis, guaranteed work. There is a pre-solicitation, which looks like it's going to be a uh, five-year contract, base year plus, uh, well, no, a two-year contract, a base year plus a one-year option year that was it's going to be coming out or it should have already come out, uh, came available. Um, that is a pre-solicitation with the VA. So there's another opportunity that's coming available. July 7th was a combined synopsis janitorial services that was due July 7th. July 28th, there's a combined synopsis that is janitorial services at Killing Vet Center. So many opportunities here, guys. June 28th, so that one has passed. Um, the this one has a pre solicitation that was updated just recently, and then so forth. As you get further down, you'll start to see the dates that have already passed. So, typically, um, you'll find that the first few results will be at the top of the page. So, let's go ahead and just go into one of them so I can show you guys exactly what you should be looking for inside of these uh, contract opportunities. Okay. All right, so once we've selected the um, solicitation that we're interested in, you're going to click that button that you just saw me click, and then you're going to basically get this dashboard that has kind of like the general information and it'll have any attachments that they have on here. So at the top, there's a menu on the side that you can kind of click on to take you to quick links of each headers. Um, but usually I just scroll down. The title is what you'll normally see here. It's kind of like a um, the statement of work title that you'll find in the solicitation. They'll have that as the title here. Next thing that we're going to do is actually uh, look at the links that they have provided for us. So in this case, it looks like there is a module link for um this particular solicitation, which means it's going to take us into the PI, the PI, basically, PIEE -E system. We're going to scroll down to the bottom and we're going to access the attachments. Okay. So the first attachment that we've accessed is the actual um, solicitation, and it's going to look like this. All right. So at the very top, it's going to show you who your point of contacts are. So you have a contracting officer and you have a contract specialist. All right. And then now it goes on to, to give you some language that is pretty much standard contract language with government contracting. Um, so I don't want you all to get so overwhelmed by the language that you see. I'm going to show you how to be able to determine if a contract is a right fit for you. So the first thing that you want to look for is the statement of work, also known as the performance work statement. So I'm going to do a control F and I want to search this document for the statement of work. So it did not yield any results. So now I'm going to go into performance work statement. Okay. So it says here, all services shall be performed with the performance work statement, also known as PWS, C attachment 001. So they actually don't have the attachment in this document. So we need to go back to our PI system 
and now we need to access attachment 001. Okay, we're gonna open that up and now we're gonna go into the statement of work or work statement. So this is the meat of the contract. It tells you what they need, all right? So you want to read this in an entire in its entirety and ensure that you understand what they're asking for. So let's go through this. It says that this is a non-personal services contract to provide custodial services in support of the 99th Readiness Division. The government shall not exercise any supervision or control over the contract service providers performing the services herein. Such contract services uh, providers shall be accountable solely to the contractor who in turn is responsible to the government. This is basically saying that whoever you hire to come in and actually perform this work, they will not supervise them, nor will they direct them or anything. You are solely responsible for your people that you bring on site and which in turn you are responsible to the government, okay? Um, the next one that we're gonna look at is a description of services. This is telling you what you need to provide. The contractor will provide all personnel, supplies, supervision, tools, materials, equipment, transportation, and other items and non-personal service is necessary to provide custodial services in accordance with this PWS, except as those items specified as government furnished property and services. The contractor shall perform to the standards in the contract as well as all local, state, and federal regulations. This is basically saying that you need to provide all inclusive, everything that you need to be able to provide this service. You got to provide it all except for anything that they will furnish as far as property or services, which will be outlined if that's something that they'll be offering. This is the objective. The objective is for them to provide a clean and attractive workplace that presents the facility in its best appearance to enhance public relations and attractiveness of the facility. This is telling you why they want the service. They basically want it to be clean and attractive, okay? The scope is that custodial service applies to all designated spaces, including but not limited to hallways, restrooms, offices, work areas, entryway, lobbies, uh, entryways, lobby, storage area, drill and assembly halls, auditorium, stairways, all of that is going to be detailed inside of the custodial service floor plan. The performance period is telling you how long the project's gonna be for. It shall be for a base year of 12 months, that means one year, and they also have four 12 month option years. So base plus four years is five year contract um, um, for this service, okay? Looks like they have a site visit in here, which they highly encourage and expect for you to conduct a site visit prior to you submitting a quote or an offer. Um, it it uh, it is actually a requirement in their custodial service floor plan uh, for layout purposes, and it says um, that it may have been revised. Therefore, the requirement not be properly ascertained without a site visit. So you need 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 absolutely need to go and schedule a site visit before you actually decide to pursue this this contract okay um in general information they're just gonna they're just telling you what they expect they are expecting you to maintain quality control they're expecting you to maintain quality assurance over in the hours of operations they're telling you when they want you to come and do the work between 8 and 4 30 monday through fridays they don't want you to work on the week i mean on the um federal holidays or any time that the facility is closed you will not be performing work okay um, it also says that you must maintain enough workforce so that there are not any interruptions during the performance period, okay? Pretty self-explanatory. They're providing you with all the federal holidays that they recognize. The place of performance is here. This is where the services will be conducted. This is telling you the type of uh, award, I mean, a type of contract that they're going to reward. And like we mentioned in, or like I mentioned rather in part one, this is a firm fixed price contract vehicle, meaning all inclusive, all labor, all personnel shall be included in one government rate that you provide. All right. Um, personnel, it says that you have to provide them with a list of the names of people that's going to be working and any alternates that will be performing any work on this contract within 15 calendar days of the performance start date. So if you start on August 1, 15 days prior to that, they need to have a list of everybody that's going to be working on the, the project, okay? Um, it says that you think your employees or your contractors need to have enough experience and training to make sure that they can meet the contract requirements. They also tell you how they want them to be dressed in what fashion, you know, as far as like 
being not having nice and neat in a clean manner. Um, and they also want a fully qualified workforce to be on board no later than the second week of the contract. So they're giving you a little time, you know, to get everybody squared away to, to get started, all right? Um, they also want you to have a contractor representative, meaning somebody on site that can represent you physically uh, during normal duty hours. And this is just to help with overall management, coordination, and furnishing liaisons with the government, okay? It goes on to tell you about how they want your personnel to uh, conduct themselves. It talks about how you, they need you to uh, have identification for your, your contractors, okay? Whether that be name tags, um, to just make sure that there's no um, confusion about the difference between contractor employees and, and the government officials. Um, it talks about conflict of interest, security requirements, key controls. This is the uh, meat of the contract. So you want to make sure that you just go through and read everything that's required. After you've decided, hey, this is something that I'm interested in looking into, I think I can be able to do this work. The next thing that you're going to look for is um, the instruction to offer, okay? The, the instructions to offer tells you how they would like for you to submit the contract or proposal, rather. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so the next thing after you check the PWS and confirm that it is something that you're interested in pursuing, you want to go into the instructions to offers, which is found in the original document that we were reviewing earlier. And you want to look at what instructions they're telling you that you need to complete in order to submit a successful proposal. So in this case, I typically search the document again for instructions to offers, and then I go to that section and read what their expect what their expectations are. In this case, it says that the government will award a contract to the offeror who is deemed responsible in accordance with FAR, FAR is Federal Acquisition Regulations, and whose offer conforms to the solicitation requirements. Award will be made only after agreement has been reached on all terms and conditions and on fair market value for the supplies and services to be acquired. Although the government intends to award without discussions, if the price is not determined, to be fair and reasonable, negotiations will commence, okay? Uh, letter B says that they will evaluate offers for award purposes by adding the total price for all options to the price for basic requirement. They may determine that an offer is unacceptable if the option prices are significantly unbalanced. Evaluation of options shall not obligate the government to exercise the option, okay? So typically when you are um, setting your base price try not to um increase your prices you know it, like extremely high um because you want to make sure that you still remain as advantageous to the government as possible the goal is to keep the contract for the full period of time not to just keep it for a year and then have them put it back out on market okay so um let's go to letter c it says that they will review past performance as it relates to the contractor's ability to perform the services being requested and they will obtain past performance information from any source available to the government to include your cpars the uh, federal awarded performance and the integrity information system all of these government issued platforms that they have they're going to use that information as past performance it also says that it talks about in letter D that um, before the offer is specified expiration time, the government may accept an offer or part of an offer, whether or not there are negotiations after its receipt, unless a written notice of withdrawal is received before award. Um, the next few letters is the FAR clauses that uh, they have listed here below. Uh, they have some insurance requirements that they are requiring that you provide and maintain. Um, for your employees. Now, the difference is if you have 1099, excuse me, contractors, workers comp, you, you are not required to have workers comp for your 1099 employees. Um, if, as far as employer's liability, that wouldn't necessarily apply if you did have, uh, you know, 1099 contractors. However, as far as liability, you should have general and, li and professional liability for your company. Um, and in this case, they want you to have a certain amount of minimum requirements 
that you would provide. So you would just provide them with your declaration um, letter from your insurance company that shows proof that you have those uh, liability insurance coverage. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily submit this with your, with your bid. It can, um, I mean, you can if you want to, but typically you, they give you time to provide it after you have been awarded. So let's scroll down to uh, the final portion. It says on letter X B that quotes and proposals are due no later than the date and time listed in the in SAM. And um, it shall be submitted in accordance with paragraph 18, offer submission instructions, okay? So um, with that being said, let's go ahead and go to paragraph 18. So I don't know if we actually found it. Okay, here we are. So this tells you how they want you to complete the proposal. They want your name, your title, your address, your email address, your telephone number. You're going to put that all on one, one sheet, okay? Um, they want uh, letter B. They want you to submit a price for each FFP, which is firm fixed price plan, okay? Plan is just a line item number, okay? And they want it for the base and option years. That's going to be on attachment four. Uh, in addition, they want you to confirm, acknowledge, any potential resulting amendments to this solicitation via completion of submission of attachment four. They want the pricing to be uh, in the format of quantity, unit price equals amount or net amount, okay? Um, they're telling you how they want the price to be done. They want you to provide your SAM UEI number, your CAGE code, your federal TIN number, and any certifications, which honestly can be done all on the same page as uh, where you put your name, your title, your address, okay? That could be like your cover letter. And, and then it goes on to show you here where they would like for you to um, su submit. So attachment four needs to be submitted in Excel format. Like it's very, very like, detail of how they want this to be submitted. And this is pretty much it. So um, typically after you've reviewed the uh, statement of work, then you'll go into your instructions for offerers. And it'll after that, you'll start basically outlining how your proposal should look and developing a plan on how you're going to uh, provide support to the contract. And that is basically it in a nutshell. This was still kind of long, longer than I anticipated, but um, I did want to provide a little bit more um, insight on what the solicitations look like. Each of them will look different, guys. So, um, you know, don't don't fret, don't worry if if you see something that's a little bit strange. Always know the key things to look for when you're going inside of a solicitation is to look for the statement of work. Look at your due date of when it's due. Um, make sure that you fully understand the statement of work because you don't want to go into a agreement um, and to or a binding agreement that says you're going to perform and provide a service that you don't fully understand what they're asking for. So look at your statement of work, look at the due date, check all of the requirements of what they're needing in the services, and then also go into your instructions for to offerers to fully understand what your proposal should entail. That's pretty much a quick overview from that. Typically, solicitations are submitted directly via email to the contracting officer unless it is otherwise specified in your solicitation. So always look for that as well. That will be found in the instructions to offerers as well. And that's a quick overview of how you can check out a solicitation and actually submit those in. It does feel a little overwhelming initially, but as you continue to go through solic solicitations and, de and determine which ones that you wanna go after, you'll find that it will become a little bit more easier for you to be able to identify what services that you want or what solicitations that you wanna pursue and what solicitations that you want to you know, pass on, okay? All right, guys, I hope that this video was helpful. Um, again, if you haven't done so already, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Share this information with um, any person that you know or any entrepreneur that you know that may benefit from this. 
Uh, this wraps up our, our government contracts for beginners. Again, if you're interested in me breaking down this process a little bit deeper, then give me some thumbs up in the comment section below. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.